Okay, so uh, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the third day of the seminar. Oh, I'm very excited. My heart is pumping now. Okay. Uh, because uh, more than a year now, you know, we haven't got any chance to do international even so very exciting. <laughs> even I haven't used English for over a year, so I try my best today. <laughs> and can you see my presentation? Okay, so I will do some, share with you some information about mentorship, okay? Maybe your organization have the same or different from VSA, we can, we can exchange, okay? Uh, so I have some video. I don't know if it work. Welcome to yes. <laughs> okay, welcome to the EVS or IVF family. Uh, about the mentorship, so usually we um, it divide to like um, sending organization and holding 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 organization, you know something like that. So what the sending organization should do also the first is to uh, do a pre-departure training like to to share the project information to the volunteer okay and uh, work, uh, work task for the volunteer and necessary support structure in the project and on arrival program i just share you in the beginning what the volunteer should keep contact with the sending organization And I, I do the summary here, the support structure for volunteer for setting organization. Like uh, they should share tasks, to volunteer to understand what is the work for them and the contact person, who is the contact person from the sending. And for the whole thing organization, we also should uh, make clear the task for the volunteer again and uh, for the hosting project information and for the host family because in Thailand, usually volunteer will, will stay in the host family. And then we have a midterm evaluation. And during, during that, we also have weekly, meet, a weekly meeting by phone, by sky, or by visiting, or monthly report. The volunteer will like we write the report monthly, and we also visit the the project. Uh, during the project, also the setting of the session should also keep contact with the volunteer. Okay. Yeah, the sending organization. But well, in this case, it's like European organization also should keep contact with EVS in Thailand. And we also have the upon arrival checklist. I go fast. This I think this information is like uh, before departure or or on arrival. So I will more focus on the, during the project for the mentorship. Uh, for the sending organization, contact person, the sending organization 
should make clear who is the contact person for the volunteer during the EVS in a European organization, okay? So those person should stay in contact with the volunteer, check the volunteer to make sure they get the need support from the whole organization, make sure the volunteer with the midterm evaluation have been performed or any feedback and stay in contact with the also volunteer and the host organization. It is from the European organization, the sending. And for the host organization, we also have the task to make the volunteer uh, to, to, to looking for the mentor for the volunteer and help with the practical arrangements such as visa, resident permits, like how when they are staying in Thailand and keep contact with the holding project because the host organization is not the host project, you know, it's different. We are in between the local partner and uh, the volunteer. We, we would send the volunteer to the local project. And uh, we also have the orientation. This is the, also the most important before we send the volunteer to the local organization. So we can see what we are doing in the, our orientation. We have party program with the uh, university. With the teacher this year upon. So during the orientation, volunteer would get a local friend. And most of them are the same as with them. So not only host organization, but they have like local friend in contact during the project. Okay, also the we all make from the EVS volunteer. She was here. Uh, orientation, so the volunteer would get a local friend. And during the, the project for two months, three months, they have a friend, they can hang out on the weekend or evening. Sometimes the volunteer cannot talk every, sometimes they have a, just small thing, you know, they, they just don't want to talk to the host or to the mentor or to the local, but they have their friend who are the same age, they can share something, you know. And sometimes we had a good, also good feedback from the about volunteer from the local student because they can share. And this is also a good thing to, to follow how, if they are doing well, you know, sometimes they just don't want to share with us a small problem, but they can share with their friends. So this is, a, I think it's a good, Thing to have a local friend during the project. And uh, the host organization also, we organize midterm evaluation, we organize final evaluation. 
Just moment. It's too much information. I just want to do some summary. Everyone is still with me? Okay. Yes. Yes. Okay. Oh, we are still in the host organization. Host organization. Okay. Usually the host organization are not only the plate where volunteer hosting, but we also host the volunteer directly in some project, but usually we send them to the local. Okay. And now uh, we have sending organization, voting organization, and the mentor now, the person who uh, keep always contact with the volunteer or the person that the volunteer can talk and share or taking care of the volunteer during the, the project. So what is the thought of the, men, the mentor? So the first contact with volunteer and you know, being a mentor to facilitate, to facilitate with the volunteer in general integration into the organization, the project, the new environment. Available for the volunteer, for introduce volunteer to the another person. Um, the mentor also should be between the volunteer and the, the, and the local community and the local project. And to support the volunteer if they have some uh, problem or every day some questions, more question about living, working. And then also mentor should keep uh, inform the hosting organization how the volunteer is doing and how the volunteer is going. Okay. And also should be the person who encourage the personal develop of the volunteer. Because during the volunteer doing the mission is also the same time that volunteer can develop their personal or skill. Okay. So usually the mentor is not the expert or the just the mentor also the volunteer, but in Thailand for us, it's also hard to find a mentor, you know, a person who are, who are not uh, a staff or the person in the organization, because usually most of them uh, cannot speak English very well. So it's for us, it's, it's hard to find the mentor who is outside the organization. So sometimes we have to adapt, you know, we have to adapt that, the person in the organization also uh, being a role of the mentor because uh, we have no, no, no mentor outside of the project. So now the holding project, or we call the local organization. So the task of the hot project is to make sure that volunteer have a career work, what he or she uh, would do or the mission of the volunteer during the project. And the host project also should have a work support person. Also again, not only mentor or the person in the organization, but in the local, we have a local coordinator we call. The local coordinator is taking care of the volunteer during working time, during uh, when they are in the workplace. Yes. And the task of the work support person or local coordinator, like to introduce volunteer to the project. So what is have to be done uh, 
during the project, interview volunteer to other person in the working place, be available for the questions during the project, organize training for volunteer if need, for example, uh, language class, basic language class, or teaching skill if they will teach at school, something like that, and explain the task for the volunteer and give the guidance about the work. And usually, uh, the host also like VSA, we have to work on this with the local before volunteer arrives, you know, to make sure. Uh, and we are the person who, who help the local project to explain to the volunteer, but not the local because in some project, their English is not very well. So they always asking us to be there and explain for the volunteer. Okay. And yeah, usually the volunteer also staying with the host family and sometimes the host family is different from the host organization. Okay. So now like we have sending organization, hosting organization, mentor, hosting project and host family. So host family is uh, the, where the, the place is volunteer staying. Because in many projects, the volunteer ha they have accommodation for the volunteer, like volunteer house or volunteer apartment. But many projects in Thailand, volunteers we will stay with the host family. So the volunteer will stay and have breakfast and dinner with the host. And usually they have lunch at the working place. And uh, Sometimes the host family can be also the same person as a local coordinator, so they can go and back to the work with the host family. But if they are not the same person, usually when you have to go to work by themselves or the, the local coordinator would pick volunteer up from the family. So after the volunteer have orientation, get enough information, have a training and starting the project. And we also have like weekly review. Usually we can visit if the project is not very far. Or if the project is far, we can call or, you know, sky or message how is they doing it for the first week. And usually we keep contact at least uh, once a week. But after that, we have a midterm evaluation in the middle of the project. We have midterm evaluation. This midterm evaluation, usually we would visit volunteer at the project, you know, like a meeting personnel or the holding organization, we meet the volunteer and the local coordinator. Usually midterm evaluation, we have the form volunteer to fill in, but uh, for midterm, we have like oral meeting, you know, we would discuss and talk and we just make a note what to improve. We have a form for this, we can share to you later, okay? Yeah, like what I said, the project visit, like we have weekly, monthly. The volunteer also would, would write monthly report. You know, every month they share out the report, what they have been done for this month. Then for final evaluation, we have online final evaluation. Also the EVS, they have quite good uh, material about this, but the volunteer also can share the storytelling, can be video, picture, or any other creative thing for the final evaluation. For example, we have this from the Thai volunteer who have done EVS in, in Europe. Can you see the big skin? No?
Everyone still with me? Yes, now we can see yes. it now. Yes. Okay. These volunteers are in Krakow. Yeah, so uh, maybe any question before we see this last video, actually. <laughs> Do you have any questions so far? Or later, okay? Everything is okay. You can go ahead with the video. Okay, so this video is a final evaluation from the Tyrone tier EBS in the uh, In Slovakia. Do you have a sound there? Because I cannot hear the sound. Is it just me or? No, I don't hear the sound either. I think that uh, Tumi will need to restart sharing in order for us to hear the sound as well. Uh, when you go, when you quickly stop the video. we cannot still hear the sound like can you reshare the the screen or
Okay, everyone, that's all for the presentation. Any question? Thank you, Tim, uh, for the presentation. Does anybody have a question about how VSA Talent is uh, working with mentors and all the process? Maybe I have a question because uh, sometimes here in Czech Republic, when I'm looking for mentors for our incoming volunteers, I have uh, troubles to find some. Uh, and then I have troubles that I find some. And then uh, after some time, they, they're they like stopping communicating with the volunteers. So I have to find like another one. So I would like to ask you, uh, maybe also you two, and maybe like also someone uh, from our European partners, what is your experience? And uh, how, if you have this issue as well, and how do you solve it? <laughs> Elishka, we will have a breakout room uh, to discuss uh, more in depth about the uh, mentoring ah, okay. Okay. and the selection process. Uh, so maybe we can talk it there, but if somebody wants to share the experience, we can share it also now. If not, then uh, uh, if you just posted as a video from uh, which we just seen with sound, so uh, feel free to click on it and, and check it later out. Um, if not, uh, I would suggest that we go uh, for the second part of mentorship. Uh, I will just um, jump over a few, few things. And I will just briefly share my screen. Um, so, well, uh, when it comes to mentorship, we had a lot of information from Tum. Uh, but just to summarize a bit quickly, so who is a mentor? Uh, is an EVS mentor is a person who likes to work with other youngsters uh, you know, within non-formal education. And it's uh, usually motivated to support the other volunteers in his her learning process. Do you agree with this uh, definition of EVS volunteer or EVS mentor, better to say, sorry, not volunteer? You all agree? I agree. <laughs> yeah, it's quite a simple one. Uh, I didn't want to just uh, stay here. Uh, just for the responsibilities, we've already had some overview from two, but uh, just to go back to it, uh, we are talking also about providing this personal support from the mentor, setting up the learning goals, which is another important part uh, of mentoring and helping to organize the learning cycle. So that's another thing. Uh, maybe you notice that there is also helping to uh, build a youth bus certificate from this point of view and also participating in the meetings with coordinator to evaluate the project could be one of their tasks. Um, so who should be a mentor? Uh, we've already seen that uh, probably the best mentor could be the person that already has been on the mobility. So an alumni uh, uh, being just returned uh, from his mobility or maybe uh, a person that is engaged in other youth organization, willing to learn something more about other cultures and be actively involved in youth actions. And what's more important, actually, this person should be open-minded and flexible uh, just to meet with uh, another person because then you need to do the matchmaking between the mentors and the volunteers. And, uh, you know, it's hard to find mentors, as Alishka also mentioned. Therefore, uh, it's important that this mentor is actually open to work with any volunteer that there is or, or so. So uh, we have here Katka today with us uh, from the uh, Slovensko, and she's actually working a lot with our mentors. And I would like to ask her to tell us more about her experience, how she's finding the mentors and how is she actually managing all, all this stuff. Katka? Hey everyone, uh, do you hear me well? Yes. Okay. So first of all, I will speak with you as a coordinator, but before I was coordinator, I was also a mentor for our volunteers. Uh, so I know the both sides, then I can like maybe explain it better uh, how we uh, work with mentors and in Mladi Info, like in real experience. Uh, so the first, um, the first part of process is finding the volunteer, uh, the mentor. Uh, then I would tell that for us as Mladi Info, it's important to, to create a community of active young people. So that's where we are trying to find the mentors. 
uh, we are trying to keep our ex-volunteers uh, in contact with us uh, who already did the EVS and when they come back to Slovakia, they are really like motivated to work more with volunteers. So that's, um, that's a good tip where to find a mentor because they already know what is EVS, what, what the volunteers need because they already did the volunteering. Uh, we also started to uh, to create like alumni network where we where we are joining all uh, all ex volunteers. So we have this uh, this community uh, with active people, and they can uh, if they are interested, they can they can become the mentor if we need some. Uh, so for Mladi Info, we are trying to. To find for each volunteer two mentors that can be hard for someone uh, who can find even the one mentor uh, but that's something what we uh, what became for us easier because a lot of time it happens that mentor after a few weeks uh, like recognize that it's not a good option for him to to be the mentor and to be the support he for or doesn't have time for that so it's nice uh when you have this possibility to find two mentors and lots of time it somehow naturally became that one will be like more friendly or or more supportive another one will be there like we will be more flexible in some situation that volunteer needs someone uh, to, to see the doctor or, or to, I don't know, speak about some problems. Uh, what I wanted to say in the, in the start is that it's really, really uh, individual in every organization. It's really up to you and up to us what, like what's working for you. I think every organization have their own uh, system the own steps what what's working so uh this is only our like our experience what's the best for us and also it's important to say that every volunteers have different needs and uh, some volunteers need a uh, friend some volunteers uh don't want like um i don't know lots of personal contact with mentor that's for them it's just somehow someone who will like show the city and, and and speak about like country and give some tips but don't want like a real friend because it's not so natural uh than if you find some friend because you understand or you have some some common interest um so how to choose the right um the right mentor and what is really important so as i said before it's it's important to that uh that the mentor has some characters like it's open-minded it's uh extrovert or i don't know it's motivated yeah it is important but also uh it's like in practical life it's important to have time for the volunteer because uh as for example i know the situation that i i really want to do lots of stuff so i'm i think i'm the right character to be the mentor because i want to spend time with people i'm open-minded to spend time with uh with uh, volunteers from other countries, but uh, it really happens often that for these people, in the end, they don't have time to spend uh, spend time with volunteers. So this is also important. Then it's important that mentor lives in the city, in the same city than volunteer, and has uh, like explored the city, know know the tips where to go, uh, where to find um, I don't know the the right places to go and and be uh, that support for a volunteer if he needs something to find in the city if it's the doctor if it's uh, if it's some restaurant or anything the volunteers want to find uh, the responsibilities for mentors so um, yeah sometimes this is really uh, questionable because mentor for us in Madi Info they are also volunteers so they like you can put lots of stuff for mentor because uh like mentor shouldn't be someone who who is working it's a volunteer so it's important that you don't give so many responsibilities for mentor but also like mentor should know his responsibilities and uh if he already decided he will be the mentor for one for volunteer 
uh, that he should like uh, continue with this decision. And it's important uh, for the start of the project that, uh, for example, in Mad Info we have uh, we have this deal that mentor should pick up uh, the volunteer on the airport, uh, should be the support in the start of the project, should uh, spend some time, show the city and speak with volunteer and like show him that he's there for him. And he's also, it's important that the mentor is not from the, from the hosting organization, like uh, he's not in the team because then the volunteer could feel like, like not being so open to someone uh, inside the organization, but uh, yet it should be someone who is not involved in the whole project like uh, in the organization and yeah this is also like really important that the relation uh, the relationship uh, between mentor and volunteer uh, is really different and it's really it's up to volunteer mm -hmm. what he needs and what type of volunteer mm -hmm. he is maybe he needs someone like a coach maybe he needs someone to to speak to with his goals, with his motivation, and like he wants to speak to mentor about his activities and how he's growing, how he's moving on with his goals. And maybe there's some volunteer who really don't need this, like he just wants to spend some free time with mentor, want to go out for beer or want to do some trip or or something, or want some contact person who will be there if if I don't know the the volunteer needs some some specific um, stuff. As we know, there can be really really different uh, different needs. Uh, so it's important that mentor also listen the volunteer and listen his needs. And it's not like too pushy maybe for his uh, for his own like image, like what he should be as a mentor. But it's important that he listen the volunteer. I have a question for you, Katka. Yes. Um, if you're working with mentors, uh, do they often prepare a learning plan with their volunteers or do they never do that? Uh, as I know, uh, they don't prepare the this uh, learning plan. Like it's uh, mostly between uh, the coordinator and mentor and like they discuss if the volunteer needs that or want that. And it's also important that mentor ask the volunteer in the start of the project, like if he wants something like that, uh, because I think for some of the volunteers, it's not natural to, to set up some goals and yes, yeah, some of them like don't need it. But if uh, the mentor asks the volunteer that he wants something like that, yeah, it's it's normal that they, they set up this learning uh, process and yes. Mm -hmm. Do you do some briefing uh, for the mentors? Just give them some like basic training or information how they should proceed when uh, encountering the first time the volunteer. Uh, yes, we do like uh, for now it was online, so so we do this like a little call where you describe uh, the situation and then you like contact the volunteer and mentor and and you connect them. Mm, somehow it depends if you meet in person or if you just like uh, contact them on some social media or such on email that's up to them. Mm -hmm. But do you give them some instructions? Like uh, if I'm a mentor, will you tell me what should I do? Yes, of course. Like uh, you will tell the mentor uh, also about the situation, what can happen. You should prepare the mentor uh, to be there like in every situation and like tell what is important for volunteer in the start of the project, during the project, in the end of the project. So mentor actually knows what he's into uh that that's really important so yes mm -hmm. um we are going to be discussing in our breakout rooms uh, more detail about matchmaking but could you maybe tell us how did you match make your last mentor and uh volunteer in base of what kind of uh rules characteristics or what was your decision based in yeah sure uh so as, yeah, also Elishka asked before that it's problem to find the mentor sometimes. So you don't have lots of options to, to choose maybe uh, the mentors for the volunteers. So 
like if the mentor seems to you that uh, he's the right person to be the mentor, then you, uh, yeah, then you contact him with the volunteer and uh, it's, I don't know, like mostly you see it in real life. You don't see it before if they will connect somehow and if it will be working with them. It's important that you will also count with the situation that volunteer want to change the mentor if it's not okay for him. So uh, how we choose the, the mentors. So we did some call out uh, to our social media or to our network. And yeah, then we had these calls with mentors and, and I don't know, we, we asked like, for example, which country you prefer, like uh, if we have more volunteers from another countries, then you can just somehow know the person and feel what's like the right mentor for the volunteer. But mostly you just can't uh, be sure that this will be working. You will see it later in yeah, in, in reality. <laughs> okay, thank you, Katka. Um, I'm just gonna escape for, for a brief time from this presentation. And um, Katka shared with us uh, some, of her, some of her experiences. And I would like to now share uh, similar experiences within our group. And I have four questions for you. I'm just going to quickly post them into the chat so everybody can read them through. And I'm going to divide you guys into breakout rooms and send you to Jamboard where we are going to discuss this. So, okay, just a second. Can I also just add a couple of things till you're making the breakout rooms? Because, oh yeah. Uh, yeah, so one thing was that also about this learning plan and like what um, Mishka presented, it's kind of a formal, um, I don't know, more formalized way how to have mentors. And then Tum was presenting us also this body system and it really depends what works the best. We would never like, because also for mentors, sometimes it's not like we don't ask them to that they need to follow the learning process of the volunteer. We had some mentors that felt like, yeah, this is my way. I want to, you know, develop also my skills in this, but not necessarily that they, they need to do that. Uh, and then also we didn't mention we also have uh, coaches like uh, really professional people who study psychology and volunteers uh, have option to have real sessions with coaches, uh, which is completely different than with the mentor. And there they can really go into like setting goals and like what they want to achieve. And this practice also worked well with us. Some of our coach, like at least one coach is also from another program that we had. So it's kind of, community of, let's say, alumni of Mladi Info and community that Katka was mentioning that we are building. Um, so that's like, there are like kind of, we could divide kind of formally that there is a buddy, that there is a mentor and there is a coach. Uh, and it really depends, um, like for sure, mentor is not the coach or like Tum was having on his slide that uh, for sure is not experienced in psychology or we don't expect that mentor has like um has to kind of observe the mental health of a, of a volunteer so i wanted to also kind of add this uh this part about the coach thank you for adding that it's a really interesting um just to realize it once again that it should not be a professional it should be just a normal person so thank you for that uh, i have the break rooms ready guys so the questions are once again um in the chat. Uh, so the questions are, which techniques do you use to match make the volunteers with the mentors? What selection criteria do you use? Which rules would you introduce to a mentor-mentee relationship? And uh, what do you do if a volunteer are not uh, a great fit to the mentor? So these are the four questions. I'm going to copy paste them once again also to the Jamboard. So please go to the Jamboard link. Uh, it should be working, and uh, then you can just go down to the breakout rooms. Is everything clear? Thank you for quick voice. 
Okay, so here is the gym board, and the first group were actually Elishka, and who was your team? Uh, I was with uh, Doom and uh, Rosica and uh, Jennifer and uh, Hero, I think, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so... Any interesting? Actually, Doom told me that he has something to do, so he would like Tom and I to listen to the seminar. Yes. Okay, thank you. So uh, I see some new stickers. And so what about the questions? So which technique would you like to use to match make your volunteers? How was the discussion on, on these four questions, Alishka or Rosica? So I would want to... Uh, Hera mentioned that in the organization they are making some uh, personality test, but uh, Hera is not the one who's uh, doing the test. It's some like uh, psychologist working in their organization who's doing it. So uh, they're doing some personality tests, for example. And then Rosica was mentioning that when they were hosting volunteers, they were matching the mentors by their skills to the department when the volunteer works. For example, if the volunteer was volunteering in some, let's say, a uh, project focused on gender equality, then uh, the mentor was someone who was also interested in the same topic and had some experience, so they were matching them by the skills. I don't know if I'm saying it right, Rosita, but... Yes, I believe it because, as I mentioned yesterday, yes, and I told you that uh, we haven't hosted a, a volunteer from abroad, so Andre and Evie, I uh, can directly know how it was run uh, before the 2017 because both of them were EVS volunteers. However, I believe, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, I believe that uh, the EVS volunteers were placed within our organization and some of the staff members were actually the mentor or someone who guided them through the volunteering service. So we didn't have, as I mentioned, we didn't have someone that was previously although some of the staff members were, were already either volunteering abroad or some of them was EVS volunteer uh, before that. But however, we didn't match former EVS volunteer to be mentors to the new one. So uh, I believe that is how it was. Uh, and unfortunately, uh, since I'm in Mladinfo from 2017, we didn't host uh, EVS volunteer. Only, we are only sending it only to Mladinfo Slovensko, mostly. <laughs> Thank you for sharing. I wanted to ask about the um, uh, personality tests. Which kind of test are you using? Hera mentioned that uh, they are doing this in uh, their organization. I don't know if, uh, yes. Are you here with us? Can you tell us more about the test, please? Okay. Probably no, but uh, oh, I asked him already. Yeah. I asked him already, and uh, he said that he's not the one doing the test. So I think there's Jennifer who wants to maybe add to this. I think she. Uh, yeah, we have the Dionis as our psychometrician who usually conducted personality tests. Lodi, can you tell us about uh, personality tests? D. Hello. Yeah. So much. Uh, what are what is your uh, question, Miss Jen? So uh, we shared. Uh, actually, we shared earlier in our group discussions that um, in order for us to match make the mentor and mentee, we usually conduct um, personality tests. And uh, yeah. Michaela mentioned something about what particular personality tests are we using. So D okay. is actually our psychometrician. Okay. Uh, there are a wide range of personality tests to uh, uh, that we can use for the mentees and mentors. However, maybe we should identify first what kind of personality we are looking for, so we could really find the right instrument to use. And also, uh, it is really a matter of uh, not being subjective with uh, with the results. Maybe we, we could come up with some uh, metrics or scales uh, to use so we could really uh, match, match uh, the, the mentees and the mentors. So in our group, we are from the group two, I also mentioned that uh, there should be a standardized screening questions 
for the mentees and mentors before the conduct of activities for us to identify first the commonalities between them because if we have if we identify the common denominator between the uh, participants or the mentees or the mentors i think that that is a good factor so to uh, establish a harmonious relationship between the two mm -hmm. you. do you have some tests that you're already using a template that maybe we can with you could share with us um in my case most of the tests is uh we avail it we avail it to different test providers but we could also do uh our own test we, we will just run validity and reliability uh test so maybe we could do a specific test that suffice our uh our our needs for the mentees and mentors mm -hmm. i understand uh, is there anything else you would like to add, guys, for the first group? I see that you already come up with some rules about how often they should meet, uh, asking about the mentor to convince the, men the volunteer to share with the organization. How family issues, yes, Alishka? Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, so when uh, we, we like talk to the mentor first about uh, the whole idea of the mentorship, uh, we also like set some rules like what is our idea like how often uh, he or she should meet at the beginning then maybe it should be more intensive with the volunteer and then uh, he or she will see because maybe the volunteer will also find some other local friends so then it, uh, it's not necessary to see each other like every week but maybe once in two weeks or something like this and then we also try to uh, ask them if uh, the volunteer will have some like uh, family issues uh, mental health issues or any like issues uh, not to like to come to us and to report it, but not to break the trust between the mentor and the mentee, but to convince the volunteer to, yeah, I think it's a great idea if you would go to the organization, you know, and, and tell them as well. So we're trying to ask the mentor to convince the volunteer to, to share it with us. Mm -hmm. Not to like be the reporter and, and stuff like this, but uh, do it in this way. Um, guys, did any of you have similar um, experience? Because Elishka mentioned yesterday that uh, some uh, volunteers had some issues, like uh, mental health issues, etc. Uh, did you have any kind of similar experience of finding out about these issues or solving them? Nope. I know, Daniela, that you had some issue with your volunteer uh, because he or she was in the hospital. Can you tell us more about that experience? yeah well it's a kind of delicate question so not question but uh, matter but um, yeah i mean generally speaking we uh, what we said yesterday we are trying to ask the volunteers to um to, to share with us uh, all the information that might be relevant so when they arrive we ask from the coordination for the for them from the coordinating point of view we ask in the first official meeting uh, we ask each volunteer to fill in a, a confidential letter in which we ask for personal detail like emergency contact and personal information that stays between the coordinating and the, and the volunteer but we ask if the volunteer has some um, information that we need to be aware of so if they are under specific medication if they have any health uh, issue um, situation so that um, very often because yeah we, we the, the best would be if the sending organization already knows the volunteer so if we are informed about it earlier but it rarely happens mm -hmm. so that's why we we develop this uh, confidential letter that in which we ask specifically if they have any any issue uh, so that we are aware and we know how to uh, to, to work on it. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, it's not always uh, successful because some uh, issues can be maybe the volunteer is uh, too afraid to share them, or sometimes the volunteer themselves are not even aware of this uh, this situation. So okay. they uh, they start to happen during the. Uh, the, the volunteering service. As I don't remember who yesterday, I think Eliska said 
that sometimes the, the, the issues, uh, the, the volunteer thought that um, at home they were dealing with the issues very well, but then once they are in an uh, in intercultural or in international environment, this issue become really a problem. So the volunteer cannot, uh, cannot uh, solve them. And in that specific case, yeah, it was mainly an emergent situation. So something quite big happened. And so we had to react immediately, uh, giving support to the volunteer through the mentor, through the coordinator. So I was there personally to the hospital, even though it's COVID time. So it was uh, um, technically not possible for us to go there, even because I was not personally related to this person. But in the hospital, doctors were quite, quite open-minded and they let me enter the, the, the hospital. So we were following the situation like directly. Mm -hmm. and, and so far the situation got solved. And what is very important is that the volunteer felt that we were there for her and we were supporting her. So she decided to stay despite the situation was quite uh, urgent and quite uh, uh, important from uh, emotional and as well uh, psychological point of view. Mm -hmm. But then, uh, yeah, I think we are managing it. So the volunteer just got back to work uh, two, two days ago. So in the meanwhile, she needed to stay at home and, uh, and rest. But with all this um, support structure that we have created, uh, we managed to, to, to handle with it. Mm -hmm. But Sometimes. did you learn about... Mm -hmm. Sorry? No, no, yeah, go for a question. Uh, I was going to ask if you learned about directly from your volunteer or did actually a mentor have a role within learning about this situation? Uh, it was an emergency. So as soon as the situation popped up in the middle of the night, <laughs> we got in informed and we had to uh, mm -hmm. immediately okay. react. And, understand. But yeah, it was, I would say it was a joint uh, effort that we, that we made together as well with the hosting organization. So. Mm -hmm. But yeah, this is a very successful situation, but as most of the cases happens, um, it's very important how the volunteer themselves react to the situation. So it could be a, a small event or it could be a major one, but it, it's always how people react to it, so how they are used to, to, to it. Just to give you a very uh, dramatic uh, example that happened to us many, many years ago, we were sending a, a, a volunteer to, to an Asia, Asian country. And during the service, uh, the father of this volunteer died. Okay. Uh, so we were supporting him and he decided not to interrupt the, the project and to continue it till the end because it was, not, it was very far away. So it was not possible to come home and then come back because it was like really, really far away. So uh, yeah, just to give you an example, the, the volunteer managed the, 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 this very hard situation uh, in, in, a very, in a very good way. And we had volunteers who uh, were just interrupting because they felt the accommodation was not proper for them or it was not clean enough and there was nothing to do and nothing, to, uh, not, nothing we, we could do to, to, to let this person uh, mm -hmm. reflect even though in that case as well, we were immediately reacting for this. So uh, there is a structure that we can put in place when uh, dramatic or difficult situation happen, but then it's always uh, a matter of how the person themselves uh, reacts and want to uh, solve the, the, the practical and the, the specific situation. Mm -hmm. Thank you for sharing. I wanted to ask uh, if maybe you could share with us the template of the confidentiality letter you mentioned in the chat. I think it might be useful for many. Yeah, of yeah, yeah. We will, uh, uh, we will do it. And um, it was, it, it's not our uh, creation. It, we saw it um, as a confidential letter from a partner that was organizing a, a, a training course and we thought it was helpful so we were adapting it a little bit the volunteering experience and then we are uh, we are printing it out and giving to the volunteers uh, in the first official meeting where we explain all the rules all the um, technical aspects once more 
about the, um, the the hosting placement. So yeah, I can I can I can share it. Thank you very much. That would be helpful. I see you're like finding new mentor. I was one sticker, Elishka, one more. I wanted to ask if you managed to find any solution for finding new mentors. Uh, yeah, like we have like open calls, like in a way that, hello, we have uh, Zuzana here from Poland and she's a very nice girl and she likes this and that and she's looking for a local friend or something like this. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, the problem was with during COVID because officially it was prohibited to meet someone else from another household. So then uh, me as a coordinator, I was in a like, very tricky situation because officially I really wanted that the volunteers needed the contact with the mentor, but then I officially couldn't even ask for it because it was prohibited, you know what I mean? So I was in really like tricky situation at the point. So me and also like my colleagues from Czech Republic, like from other organizations, we were kind of, how to say it, like substituting the mentor a lot, you know, like taking them for trips outside or something like this, even though it's not the right way it should be, it was still better than nothing. So when uh, we had the problem with the mentor during the COVID time that uh, she was either in the quarantine all the time or was worried to meet. And then I was just like substituting the role, yeah, like taking them for trips and inviting them for dinner. It was like better than nothing. So yeah. it was like a crisis situation. And uh, so we did that. I understand. Yeah, it's really hard. But I see that actually also group two has worked well. Does anybody want to sum up? I think it was um, Andre, if I'm not mistaken, but I can check. Carolina, so, you are amazing girl. <laughs> yes, it was Carolina. Anita. Yeah. So sorry, I was not speaking because in the mean uh, in the meanwhile of the, of our uh, group meetings, my my internet crashed down, so I had to restart everything. So I didn't see that the guys were completed the the, the jam board. Yeah. Basically, I personally share our um, experience with Vicolo Corto, how we work with mentor we of course at the real beginning had also um, the, the direction to to involve some local volunteers in doing some voluntary uh, mentoring to our to our volunteers unfortunately as we already mentioned yesterday and even the day before right now it's really really hard for us to find local volunteers will to do uh, some mentoring or to do some local volunteering with us covid of course didn't help in any way and we realized that with this informal let's say let's call it like this mentoring uh, sometimes volunteers didn't match really with the mentors sometimes we had mentors that were uh, much younger than the volunteers themselves sometimes the mentors were frustrated because the volunteers didn't answer or maybe didn't didn't get along well with them so what we did uh, it was basically to uh, make the mentor the mentors a bit more uh, let's say formal or professional somehow asking for some reinforced mentorship so right now as i was already explained to andre and the rest of our group we had this couple of guys that are uh, working with us as mentors so as official and professional mentor, uh, but both of them comes to uh, a, nice, a nice reality and a nice idea because one guy was actually um, a previous volunteer with us, is a guy from Spain that is in Pesaro since 2018 and is uh, taking care of volunteers in Pesaro and in other couples of reality, we coordinate. And another girl that is locally from living from a small village where we coordinate six volunteers in a Red Cross committee. And she's a volunteer of the Red Cross itself. She became an Italian teacher and now she's also the mentor of the volunteers. So both of the figures are really doing it on a professional way, meeting the volunteers 
on a weekly basis and also for individual sessions, but both of them are also there for the informal times. So both of them are also covering the body, uh, let's say, profile that the volunteers need, involving them in the social life in the city uh, with the other volunteers and so on, and trying to be a good connection, a good link between the coordinating ghosting reality and, of course, the volunteer itself. So this is how we proceed. And then, of course, especially with Andre, we went to other, other um, thoughts and topics, like, for example, how much now the national agency is asking for, uh, is focusing on the figure of mentor and for commitment. Uh, I explained to the guys that, for example, Italian national agency now um, calling uh, volunteers for the online um, on arrival training, the midterm training is asking for a big, big online form that I personally fulfill with a lot of questions on the volunteers, a lot of them. And they are also asking for the personal mobile number of the mentor of the volunteer. And they are calling them before every training, asking in detail for any fewer opportunities, how the volunteer is going, is doing, and, and everything. So they are really focusing on it. And it's a really, really important figure. That's why we we try to develop it in, 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 this, in this more professional way. Because of course, the mentor is also a professional figure that has to have this kind of pedagogical um, characteristics, no? To help also the volunteer to understand the learning process that from the inside, it's sometimes hard for them to understand. And also at the end, of course, it's the, it's the person that is accompanying them also in the writing of the youth pass. So a lot of uh, important steps, you know, not only hanging out in the, in the evening or showing them uh, the best places in the weekend. So yeah. That's how we how we work, and then we were also with Anita and um, and uh, Rio. Uh, so I don't know if they want to add something. Uh, I mentioned that um, uh, in our organization Poracanova, uh, when I worked uh, um, before Mladi Info, uh, we. Uh, had uh, EVS volunteers, not only EVS volunteers, but from other programs also, uh, all the time. And uh, we uh, have um, a daycare center where we have two educators uh, who work work related men mentors to the volunteers. Um, one of uh, our employees are uh, is technical uh, mentor who is uh, responsible for. Uh, all over uh, uh, things related uh, to the stay and uh, everything else. We also have local volunteers that serve as uh, entertainment mentors. I don't know how to say it. Uh, and um, me as coordinator, um, I mostly uh, serve as psychological support uh, to the to the volunteers. So uh, we are covered uh, all the uh, social and professional and psychological life uh, in uh, in the country uh, related to the um, uh, rules for meeting for uh, schedule for meeting they they meet uh, every day because uh, they are all uh, employees the mentors are uh, all employees uh, in the organization so they meet and work together on a daily basis uh, mm -hmm. except for with the local volunteers uh, who come uh, most of them come uh, i don't know three times per week so they meet uh, uh, regularly yeah uh, and uh, we try to make uh, their stay uh, in uh, our organization as pleasant as possible. Mm. Okay, thank you for sharing. Uh, I see one interesting thing that there's a professional paid mentor for all volunteers. But uh, before we just uh, discuss that, I would like the third group uh, to quickly summarize uh, if they had any ideas that hasn't been mentioned yet. And the third group was. Um, there was Katka. Um, yeah, I was there as well. <clears throat> yes. Katka, the opponent, and Daniela. 
Yeah. Uh, hello. So I think we mostly said lots of like similar stuff because it's just like the page before you share the same uh, information about the informal and formal uh, mentor. What would I add was that we, in the end, we found the technique how to connect maybe uh, the volunteer and the mentor. That's what we say that maybe uh, if the volunteer send you the motivation letter and also the the mentor, uh, then you can maybe try to to connect the people who have the same attitudes, the same interests, the same like way how they maybe explain themselves. Then you can just see the the papers from then and try to see like what's similar or like if they has, have some activities in common and then just like do this kind of it depends you can do a personal test and you can do the interview where you ask the same questions maybe and and you have also the the personal uh experience and you you see how the person uh like maybe answer the question so it's up to you if you prefer some uh, some like Mm, test or some real interview mm -hmm. yeah okay but i don't know if you want to add something but um if we're done i really found interesting the idea about having a paid mentor but i think that there is actually no budget for it uh in any kind of project so i find it a bit difficult even the idea is really nice um, but, um, we are uh, with the new ESC. We are asking for inclusion support. Okay, and so, then you can pay from the inclusion yeah, support. Yeah, sorry. yeah, because when when we, we write the project, we uh, we write down that we we plan to involve uh, almost every participant with fewer opportunities, or at least uh, the high majority of it. Um, because yeah, I mean, under fewer opportunities categories, you can almost put everyone, more or less. And so we receive the budget for the inclusion support, and we pay the mentors uh, out of this budget line. Mm -hmm. That's a nice idea, and definitely something we should talk about when writing our projects for ESC uh, about making like definitely more sustainable for all of us and also easier to find a mentor if you have a paid job, let's say it like that. It's definitely a bigger motivation than just being a volunteer. Unfortunately, not uh, everybody can allow themselves to use the time only as a volunteer because maybe you're also struggling financially. So that's definitely something to uh, think about. Um, yeah, if, if I can just add something. Uh, I think this is one of the, um, the black uh, points black parts of the the blurry part of the uh, Erasmus plus and now ESC uh, because from one side they say the the, the mentor should be uh, not paid not part of the organization should be volunteer and on the other side they require a lot of skills competencies attitudes uh, professionalism uh, time uh, involvement uh, which I idealistic is very good but uh, in, in real life, it's really, really hard. So uh, we are just sharing the way how we uh, understood it and how we uh, decided to, to, to act. In, in the past, when, the, when it was uh, under Erasmus Plus, you needed to ask specifically for exceptional cost for reinforced mentorship, but there was not a fixed amount. So we were always asking for some specific amount doing explaining the exact calculation on, on, on the on the costs of the mentor and the national agency every time was giving a different amount so they were either cutting completely they were cutting into half or giving the whole amount so it was really really hard to manage it one of the positive elements of the uh, esc is that at least there is this inclusion support which is a, a um, fixed amount for uh, each day so yeah that's great yeah, the funny story about when I started to be a mentor was when I met the, the first volunteer, the first volunteer I was a mentor, and she was like whole day asking me the questions like, you are doing this for free, like, you are here with me for free, like, you are going with me there for free, and she really, like, couldn't understand why I'm doing this, it was really funny, like, I was like, okay like i think it is like the same it's my volunteering so yeah mm -hmm. 
that's funny. Uh, Evie, uh, I think you might be ready uh, with the presentation uh, on feedback and storytelling. You there, or should I share a screen for you? Uh, I'll try to share my screen myself. I hope it will work. Oh, not this one. So here we are. Feedback. Can you see it now? It's loading. Yes. Perfect. Yeah. Okay. So Daniela kind of started with the feedback to the national agency. <laughs> And um, yeah, I completely agree with that. And we will continue with the feedback, kind of juicy topic in maybe somehow also in personal life, but also in our work with volunteers, it can be sometimes very tricky on how to give a feedback, um, not only to volunteers that we have, but maybe also to mentors that we mentioned. Sometimes we had cases that, Mm, as you were guys sharing also the people kind of were enthusiastic at the beginning and then they just didn't have time and it was also hard for us to kind of give them give them proper feedback or like how to approach uh, approach the situation um so um so basically, as, as I said, like it's, a, it's an important part uh, to give and also receive feedback um, in mentoring relationship, uh, but also in a whole experience as a volunteers, but also for us as, as organizations, um, either hosting or sending, um, we, we try to also implement it in, in, our, in our team to give feedback to each other. And uh, um, maybe, you know, you can also share your experience. Sometimes feedback um, also in our context is a little bit uh, kind of understood as criticism that you're going to criticize a person about their behavior and or how the person is. So ideally, uh, feedback should be more informative and less, less critical and offensive that that's uh, uh, that's for sure. And it should be more like how we perceive the behavior. So here, especially in this project, we are, there can be really clash of culture and it can be totally different that uh, you perceive situation somehow and then uh, the volunteer or the other person perceives it uh, totally differently. Uh, and so taking this um, kind of um, attitude it can give us possibility to improve and to work on it uh, rather than to be offended by what uh, other person is saying and obviously um, also for us as coordinators or organization um, we can like pick some things from like what uh, makes sense and, and think about it and same for the volunteers so they um, I mean they don't really have to kind of um, take everything because it's it's kind of our perspective. Uh, so it should be really not judgmental and it should should not be ideally criticism. Why my screen is not working? Ah, okay. Uh, so I took some kind of like characteristic uh, what is a good feedback and we will share with in a folder also this is taken from one um, publication uh, about mentoring and one part is also about the feedback so you can come back there to it but I found it pretty pretty nicely distinguished so as I said it should not be um, it should not be like moral judging and interpreting of what or like how other person is so also in a, in a kind of personal relationship, you don't want to kind of end up arguing like you do this and you are like this, uh, but better just like descriptively uh, talking about the situation, what happened and maybe finding out why it happened so that it would not be, uh, so it would not repeat ideally. It should also uh, be direct. Uh, which sometimes may be also difficult to be really direct and talking about the situation, but sometimes it's, uh, it really depends on the situation, what it is about. 
um, but you should take um, like to state the facts better than to uh, mix it with too much, let's say, emotions. Uh, so it sh should not be impulsive also, ideally that you are not, um, I don't know, that you're angry at the volunteer. Uh, so let's say there is a situation that let's say you need to uh, prepare a workshop with volunteers and um, you agree that they should be there for you at 10 o'clock in the morning and uh, they don't show up. But there might be something uh, that might happen. Maybe they parted last night and they just <laughs> overslept. So then uh, ideally that uh, you don't kind of um, argue with them at the at the moment at the workshop or whenever they show up but later on you sit down with them and explain them what uh, what happened and why it happened um, and it should be also then it kind of relates to the other point which is also good timing so you don't wait too long for uh, for the feed to give the feedback uh, ideally it happens somehow um, maybe like the latest next day that the situation uh, occurred um, and it should be really useful and valuable for the other person and also ideally maybe kind of supportive uh, but here I don't know like from my experience it's also tricky sometimes to kind of uh, find the balance where you need to be friend and supportive and when you need to kind of be more strict and put the rules because sometimes um, when I was still a coordinator and let's say I had five people in the office and I was there by myself, well, sometimes it turned out like uh, that they were doing what they wanted because I was uh, there just by myself. So you really kind of uh, need to be supportive, but at the same time uh, to put some rules uh, of what we are doing here. And um, as I said, kind of like it can be difficult for us as uh, coordinators to, to give feedback. And there are different maybe kind of beliefs and I don't know, it, it also depends on the situation. It can be also financial situation of the organization or whatever you can think of because like if you depend on hosting volunteers, you don't want to kind of lose them. And sometimes if you kind of, you are too strict or you are like uh, uh, giving them feedback and they cannot take it, they might decide just to leave and then you will be jobless yourself. So, you know, there are some triggering points that you might consider. So I wanted to kind of ask you guys also, what is your stinky fish? Uh, I don't know if you know also this game. Uh, or like a metaphor, a stinky fish is something that like it, if it stays there for too long and you kind of hide it and if, if it gets older, it stinks more and more. So um, in the Jamboard, uh, you, can, you can find the, and how can I see now my, my chat? Uh, you have to go up, Evie, uh, mm -hmm. and it, there should be like, you know, a drop down, something moving, and then you have the possibility to open the chat. But uh, Amisha, can you just share the Jamboard? And there, sure. uh, there is a, there is just one for everybody. So let's have like one, two minutes. If you can think of something, I uh, that what is your stinky fish? Why you are sometimes avoiding to give feedback to to volunteers? For me, it was, for example, the last one that, or like also maybe the second, I didn't feel comfortable at the beginning. And then somehow I believed that they should not be criticized. So the Jamboard is basically the one that we've been using before. Uh, you just have to scroll to next pages and the slides. And I think it's on a slide it's six. Slide. It's slide Five. Five. Okay, five. Mm -hmm. 
they see that we are there, which is not, not right. Luca, can, can you repeat what can we write? Yes. So my question is, what is your stinky fish when it comes to uh, feedback? Why sometimes we are avoiding as coordinators to give feedback to right. the volunteers? It can be that maybe you don't have time because you have to do other things um, that like managing the whole program or you are alone for 10 volunteers that you need to manage it. You really don't have a space for giving feedback or you have bad experience with giving feedback. Stickers coming. <laughs> not feeling confident enough to talk to volunteers who are older than me <laughs> that's a good I can, one i feel like that's really something that that's me good. guys when i uh, uh started working in Mladi info uh, the volunteer was here already like four months and uh, he was like four years older than me it I failed it completely. I just didn't feel confident enough because like, uh, I felt like he's even more experienced in the organization than me. And he was like older than me. It was hard. Yeah. So to be honest, I'm still like uh, youngest. <laughs> I was <laughs> thinking it was you, Katka, who gave this sticker and, uh, about the age. Actually, no, like we spoke a lot about this with volunteers. The first I, I said like, yeah, I'm I'm younger than all of you. And uh, maybe you will feel like uncomfortable with like sharing some stuff or so, right now. But I think we discussed it and it's totally OK. Like we don't feel the like some age gap or something like it's not a lot, but, uh, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, possible dropouts. Yeah, that, that was my also kind of worry. I want them to like me. <laughs> I think this is this is a good one, and I think this is uh, this is something that um, that's me as well. <laughs> that's you. I had the same problem at the beginning also. Good news. I don't have the problem anymore. <laughs> yeah, we should learn that. <laughs> uh, I have a hard time distinguishing constructive and conclusive feedback. Mm -hmm. Maybe you can explain it, the difference. That, yeah, if if you feel like sharing, whoever wrote that. I mean, I'm not uh, like expert, but should be that yeah, constructive should be that really there is a space for, um, uh, for like something to add maybe by the side of the volunteer, and conclusive is more like okay, I don't want to talk about it. It's just more like that you just tell the person what you're, what you think, and that uh, there is no really space for discussion. So mm, that should that should not be the case. Um, considering that some things are obvious and shouldn't be explained in details. I think that there's nothing obvious. Like every time I'm not referring only to the feedback with our uh, volunteers, but also like in the daily communication, if you're communicating with the team, I think like nothing is obvious until you say so. So that's kind of my my problem that I just cannot be thinking the things you just have to say it. I don't know if that's some somewhat helpful or not, but maybe uh, you can elaborate whoever wrote that. I see there is also some bad experience complaining on a midterm bad experience with uh, national agency reactions. Is that Andre who wrote that? I wrote it, but uh, I'm, it's experience from another organization in Czech Republic. I'm a friend uh, with the coordinator and uh, yeah, like then the volunteers, they were complaining on the midterm to the facilitators who have never been to the organization, didn't talk, was there in the situation and uh, they completely like, uh, blamed organization for really wrong approach even though like uh, nothing is black and white but uh, 
I had this, uh, I observed this experience that uh, they give usually that the volunteer is right, you know, and here's the one uh, who has to be right and taken care of. And uh, they weren't completely objective as they could be, I, I thought, in this situation. Yes, I can, I can completely agree with what Eliška was telling. And my current volunteers, when they had um, midterm training, the agency asked them about any kind of problems, small problems, any kind of issue they have. And when they mention some, they immediately create some breakout room to go into all the details, you know, just to uh, listen, you know, all, everything. And it's, I, I agree, it's just, you know, like one side of the story, but the, I have a feeling that the agency just, you know, listen the, the volunteer opinion. They then ask the coordinators, you know, what is their interpretation of the story. And I'm, I'm quite um, like not satisfied with such an approach because volunteers have on rival and midterms and we have only once a year, some annual meeting where only few coordinators come. And uh, I think it's like not balanced well, the communication. I, I think the agency can do some on arrival and meet them for coordinating. <laughs> Actually, there was, there was this for, but only for new employees. And they didn't want to invite like more experience. It, they say it's only for the new one. So I, uh, I'm kind of, with, uh, with Carolina, we also discussed this, that I don't know, the, the, the agency approach towards this thing and just one example, when uh, once my volunteer complained about some things, they even sent a control. They, they, they sent the control to me, like, okay, these are some serious issue. Let's go for some super deep check. And I think it was all still some, um, it's, I mean, yeah, it can happen. I mean, I, of course, I, uh, there were some mistakes, I admit, but just to be ready that this can also happen. <laughs> Yeah, for example, my volunteers, like our volunteers from Alinfo, they are going for a midterm and they have the experience from on arrival that some other volunteers from another organization said some like a little complaint, but it wasn't nothing serious. And the national agency and agency went to their flights to control the flight and all these things. And now like our volunteers, they are like, like we are going for midterm and we don't want to tell anything to them because they will care a lot about like some little things. So I think for the national agency, it's like, it's not good because the volunteers now, they are not open-minded for them. Like I, I, I spoke to them about the situation. I told them like how they care and how, how they solve the problems, but they don't feel like, uh, they don't feel like open-minded and free to tell them like, nothing now <laughs> it's, it's a really strange situation when you know even the volunteer uh, uh, that the agency behave like a police and the volunteer uh, is more friendly with the organization because they are with them every day and the agency is something you know external and i it's for me this is really strange like in the past i never had such a situation that i need to team up with the volunteer to prepare for on arrival and midterm in such a sense that please tell there some good things otherwise i will have problem just just help me and of course they are ready to do this but then then they tell me exactly this uh, these things and when the volunteers speak, say any bad thing about some host place they were immediately like oh my god what is happening what is happening we need to act like the agency i'm like i will i should i now prepare all the volunteers in such a fake style like you know how to behave on on arrival enemy term not to cause problem to me it's, and it can be minor things. Yes, like I met with my mentor only a few times because, and they, what, 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 what? Tell us again, what, what, what do you mean with, you know? And it's, it's so, I, I don't know. I'm disappointed. <laughs> I totally, sorry, Caro. I saw you wanted to talk as well. I mean, we are, uh, we are having a very similar situation. And uh, actually what, what happened during, uh, what was happening when it was in presence at least, that the national agency was sure because in, I don't know how it's in your countries, but in, in Italy, the on arrival and the midterm are not uh, run directly from the national agency, but they are run from one NGO that has the uh, commitment with the national agency. So the national agency staff only show up uh, one day, actually often only for half a day. And they publicly say, if someone has problems, come to talk with us. So they don't even ask for feedback. They just ask if you have a problematic situation, come come with us. 
and we had only one one super volunteer that uh, that went to the to the office of the national agency saying i don't agree with this um perspective that you are uh, putting i don't have any problem but i want to give feedback about my organization because i'm very happy so it happened but it was just i think just one and then it's very easy another topic is that very often the the um, uh, the trainers in midterm and in honorable training, uh, instead of um, helping them to uh, solve the situation, were preparing the volunteers on, and sometimes they were even doing some, um, let's say, role play on how to um, go to your hosting organization and claim for 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 the change. So they were even they were not. Uh, calming down the situation, but as we say, they were like sitting on, on, on fire, they were blowing on fire. So the volunteers were coming home, maybe volunteers were going to the, to the meeting uh, happy, and they were coming home angry and full of regret. Sometimes it happened the other way around, where the volunteers go and then they see the reality of other hosting organizations, and they come back and they say, wow, we are lucky, we are very lucky because we have this, this, and this, and other stuff. Good. So we have another another. Uh, so there is also unconscious fear of encouraging them to see problems and criticism. So probably that should uh, that should not be the way. That, that's mine, and it's uh, completely connected to the fact that sometimes if you don't put, you know, the the, the um, like the shape of the feedback you would like to have. In general, asking for feedbacks, especially to young people, it's it's really easy. Then that it's it's perceived like um, feedback should be a complaint, no? Like when you don't hear from volunteers, in general, everything's okay. When you hear is about a complaint, it's really rare that you hear uh, a spontaneous positive feedback, you know. So it's completely connected to what Daniele was saying and Andre too. Like sometimes this approach, like giving me feedbacks is opening, like everything is good, but there is this thing and is opening, you know, a big, a big speech on it when maybe sometimes it's not even needed. But if you ask, I have to answer with something, no, I have to check something that maybe it's a small thing that became bigger. So yeah, this is the approach that it's, of course, maybe it should be, should be improved. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if, if I can just add one thing, um, it's kind of maybe a suggestion that it's kind of good practice that we use and sometimes it, it, it helps and I, I, I was using it when I was mentoring myself, so I was giving, I was uh, acting as a mentor for some volunteers and, the, and I was starting every mentoring session asking them, tell me each of you the best thing that happened to you in the previous seven days, in the, in the previous week. At, at the beginning, for some volunteers, it was very hard to say nothing and so on. And then little by little, they got used to that. And in the end, they told me that every time they were doing something, they were uh, mentally pointing out that they needed to tell me in the next meeting. It's very simple, but somehow it's putting them into the positive perspective. So you are starting the mentoring session uh, with people who are not seeing the, 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 the negative uh, part. But they start thinking about what, what was positive and what is nice in, in their life. That can be either connected with the project, very rarely, or with their personal life. But still, it's putting them in, the, in a very positive way. Thank you, Daniel. Yes, this is a very simple but useful technique. Also, our uh, last coordinator, Teresa, she was using this when we still had the physical meetings that, and it really sets up different atmosphere than for talking. If you start with sharing uh, something positive, or you can say three positive and one negative thing. So you really know maybe also what's going on in their personal lives uh, that might be influencing how they behave also as volunteers or at work, let, let's say. So that, uh, that can also be very, very useful. I encourage to use that. And somebody also wrote, and maybe I would like to hear also from 
our Asian partners, uh, if it's polite to criticize, it says, as I heard in some countries in Asia, it is not polite to say no or criticize being negative is it's connected with losing face. Somebody wants to maybe comment on it. How is the feedback culture? Diapon, go ahead. You need to unmute. Uh -huh. Yes, from your question, that is it polite to, to criticize the volunteer, right? Uh, in Thai cultures, and I think most uh, ASEAN countries, we don't, we don't criticize uh, directly. We try to talk a bit around the bush, and then we, we will get to the point. So we don't say it directly, but we, we spend time talking about the environment, something like that, and then we get to the point. Uh -huh. And we are afraid of uh, making the volunteer lose face. That, that is also the, one of the reasons. So maybe we talk to, to like the organizing, uh, the organizer, then the organizer will talk to to that person directly, some, something like that. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, wonderful guys. We have many stinky fishes in the, in the room, but it's good to talk about it because I think this is uh, something, uh, I see one of you also wrote that you don't feel maybe trained to give feedback, um, but it's also good just to like, think about like how to maybe approach the situation because sometimes it can really be uh, become bigger than it is just because you didn't speak about it uh, and like from small tiny things it can become that like yeah you are frustrated volunteers are frustrated and everybody wants to just disappear uh, so it's better to like um, either have um, meetings with them regularly and start as Daniela was sharing, um, maybe with giving positive and negative things that happened and to understand the whole situation. And then like bits by bits, you can also understand um, different things. So it doesn't need to be on like, also like one, one to one, let's say, uh, confrontation <laughs> or how to say that it can be um, also group a meeting if they feel comfortable sharing and it really depends uh, on your capacities too. Good, so um, for the next activity, we, we will go again to breakout rooms. Yeah, there were some passionate discussions about this. Uh, I was in the group number two. So uh, let's uh, let's start with a small sharing what you learned in the groups. Um, so maybe we can start with group number one, if you guys feel like. Yes, uh, Orm and Diapon, do you want me to start so you can add if I miss something? Yeah, sure, sure. Sure, sure. Um, so, um, uh, we mentioned several different approaches that we are using when providing the, the feedback for the volunteers. To be honest, I first, today I, I heard about the positive, negative and positive the sandwich technique feedback when providing it. So basically to, to provide first the positive feedback, then you're starting with the criticizing and you're finishing again with the positive feedback. So probably the volunteer should have some kind of an image that overall he's doing a good job, but where's the place that he can improve himself as well. Um, we mentioned that uh, it really depends on the situation. Now the feedback is mainly provided online via email, on a Zoom call, on Skype calls. Uh, but a couple of years ago, uh, in the Asian partners and we as well as Mladinfo provided a face-to-face -face feedback with the volunteers. Uh, now, because we only have uh, online volunteers, mainly the feedback is provided uh, via mail or if necessary via uh, calls, but very rarely. Um, uh, Dia Point mentioned something interesting that uh, the coordinator of the project provides feedback, sometimes provides feedback to the hosting family and to the volunteer at the same time uh, in order to uh, avoid the confrontation between the, the, those two parties. 
Um, also, Orm mentioned that sometimes they're giving uh, questions to the volunteers and the, the volunteers should ask, should answer that question and basically extract the feedback themselves. So uh, what do you think that you can do better? What do you think that, uh, I don't know. So basically leaving the volunteers to realize themselves what they can do good or uh, what they can perform better through some kind of a questionnaire, if I understand it well, or I can explain it better if I, if I didn't. Uh, mostly uh, the, the feedback is provided from the uh, supervisor or from the uh, coordinator, but some, some of the partners also use peer evaluation feedback. Uh, we in Mladinfo uh, never use uh, peer evaluation or I don't know, some volunteer to provide feedback to the other volunteers and similar. Um, And did it? I don't know if I mentioned all or more. The point can can add something if you like. Thank you, Rosita, for sharing. So, guys, if you don't want to add anything, we're just gonna move to the other group. Yeah, everybody's fine with what Rosita presented. I like that uh, also that, I mean, in the case of Asian partners, you already mentioned that you have a lot of time also hosting families. Sometimes there can be situation, it's good to collect or like even include mentor, depends if, if it's like the situation is um, too tricky to figure out where the truth lies. <laughs> so it's good to um, to ask uh, more people on, on what's going on. So thank you guys. Then I was uh, observing a little bit participating in the group number two. So then Andre, Carolina, uh, Jennifer were there uh, also. So some of you can share. Uh, okay, so I wrote just a few notes, guys. So Carolina was mentioning that, um, uh, as you might remember, Vicolo Corto has this uh, professional mentor who is like paid uh, staff, uh, uh, who is uh, mentoring more of the volunteers at the same time. And she mentioned some examples that uh, the volunteers' problem you know, sometimes are better if they are discussed with the mentor, with the coordinator or some psychologist, or maybe as we have this coach or a friend. So it should be directed to the right person because we cannot solve all the things. And it should be, uh, yes, directed like this. Then I brought some examples from our organization. Um, like here where I am hosting volunteers as a host organization, we have this more official Monday meeting where we speak and uh, uh, I give the feedback to the volunteer, but it's mostly something positive about the activities. So it's like just small positive things, you know, what happened last week, what I like, or what I think had some uh, positive impact. And if there is some place for improvement, I also mention it, but only like quickly. It's not like real uh, time for discussion or something, you know, because I don't want to go to too much psychological philosophical discussion with the volunteer i just say my opinion you know let's do this next time like this or let's try so it's kind of a more bossy approach about some improvement that you know that i think can be done but if there is a place for some bigger feedback like yesterday i gave it to my uh, volunteer it took you know almost one hour so i always need at least half an hour or 45 minutes because she wants to speak i want to speak everybody wants to discuss details but so yes for this i always do it individually and uh, i think about the right uh, moment I, uh, you know, uh, the right uh, atmosphere and the mood of the volunteer. So, and usually it starts very friendly. And we uh, like uh, this Asian example that we, uh, you know, it goes slowly, slowly, and then to the point. So not to be a big shock uh, for the volunteer uh, and keep it positive. And as Ivana was telling in her um, presentation also, the, my intention is always to improve some behavior that, you know, I honestly want to help my, my, um, my mindset is always like, I do this to help you, you know, so let's 
try. And uh, yesterday, in yesterday feedback, the volunteer even offered to make a small role play, which I was like surprised. I immediately say like, yeah, yeah let's try it. So I pre pretend to be some person and then we play a role play and she try to act differently. Uh, and it was quite fun. She was like laughing during the process. And then I was laughing. It was funny, but it was a really good uh, example. That, but I was happy she offered such an uh, activity. And then the last thing I wrote that uh, sometimes we send like online questionnaire. It was supposed to be monthly, but you know, some volunteers don't like this style. And if so, but yeah, a questionnaire when there is also a question like improvement ideas for us, uh, because you ask also if there is some written type of and this is this is anonymous or not anonymous but they can write us you know in a written form as well so i think it's good to have more types of uh, that you are always open to listen to the volunteers on daily basis weekly meetings or online or a written form we are here for them <laughs> that's it from me Thank you. Okay. Yeah, thank you also for sharing uh, the role play. I think it can really sometimes uh, open up the eyes for both sides that if you kind of, it can be also that you, the volunteer plays the role of the coordinator um, and the way around. So that can also like you can see yourself how it looks from the other side. Uh, that, that's a good one. So let's move to the group number three. And uh, Anita, Daniela, Eliska, and Mishka, you were there also. Who would like to share from the group? I was just checking, so guys, go ahead. Oh, Eliska. I can, I can share. Uh, so uh, we started that uh, we do the sandwich method, as we illustrated here. And Daniel added that uh, you should make a big sandwich with a lot of cheese in it. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so uh, so not to make it as a shock to the volunteer, like these are the bad things and like also like put positive things, that's something negative, that again something positive, then maybe again something negative, but it's good to finish with something positive, you know, because the last thing uh, sometimes creates the whole impression of the whole session. Um, yeah, Anita mentioned that she's a trained psychologist and uh, we discussed that it really helps that the organization helps. So uh, this uh, result, like uh, this person in the organization, it's amazing because for example, we have to outsource this help. Uh, if we have some issues, we have to outsource it, but then there's zero cooperation back with the, between the psychologist and the organization. They barely want to make us an invoice because they say it's too uh, sensitive to share it with us, how many sessions they had and blah, 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 blah even if we pay for it. So it's very difficult to get uh, some cooperation with the psychologists, it's almost impossible. So if there's a chance to have someone like this in the organization, it's, uh, it's amazing uh, because this person is also trained, you know, to... To, to do the feedback and to perceive, uh, to foresee the potential problems. Uh, Daniela said that uh, it's good to ask uh, specific questions, not just like, how are you and how is going everything, but like to ask like very specific, like, uh, uh, for example, how did you feel in this uh, activity or when doing this or that, so something specific. And uh, I added that it's good to ask open questions, not like, did you like this activity? because then it's like yes and no and the conversation uh, ends there usually but it should be like open question like how did you like it and why and why not and uh, to ask like open questions uh yeah uh i don't know i don't remember who was it uh, someone mentioned that it helps to have like a table like daily report for the activity of the volunteer because then it's easier to think uh, of what the volunteer was doing so to track like uh, really well uh, all the activities of the volunteer. Um, and uh, yeah, I think uh, Hera was mentioning again, some of uh, the personality test. I don't remember quite well. I don't know if I will interpret it well. So if you want uh, Hera to interpret it, what, what did you say? Hello. Uh, so uh, 
the feedback the feedback uh, mechanism or the feedback for uh, providing feedback will depend on the personality of the person so very it's very important we should add that in the in the process of selection of the uh, volunteers we identify their personality and their attitude towards work and uh, we can have these rubrics that will have the competencies that uh, be uh, that we uh, that the volunteers are being graded based on their and uh, based on their accomplishment based on their performance. So the rubrics is a list of competencies that the mentor is the, uh, that is easy for the mentor to assess the progress of a volunteer in doing uh, or from the start of the activity up to the uh, up to the last activity that uh, that will be part of the uh, uh, that will be part of the volunteering activities that's all thank you yeah so i guess uh, that's all uh, from our group thank you guys thank you very much um I also wanted to add a little bit to, I think it was mentioned in the first group uh, and related to having as the third group that having a psychologist in the organization or somebody with psychological background is really helpful. Um, also related to peer to peer feedback. Sometimes this can be also a good technique, but um, it can also slip to kind of arguing between the volunteers. So it's also good to have if you have a youth worker or somebody who can kind of navigate them uh, how to do this, how to give feedback to each other. Uh, it can be also um, useful. And uh, on the last note, also on the personality kind of adjusted feedback, obviously you, um, you can also take this into consideration if somebody is really, I don't know, introverted person that you're not going to talk in front of everybody uh, about what happened, but really take time and talk even like Andre Navarro was sharing that he took one hour to kind of informally uh, get to a point with the volunteer kind of approaching her in a, like in the kitchen or the space where they have uh, um, space just to relax and then also to find the, the time when she's so let's say in a good mood and that you can kind of approach the volunteer so that also can play, play the role of how uh, he or she will will take it or not take it maybe uh, so thank you guys for all the sharings it was uh, it was very very good uh, and we do you, do you guys need break or I think we can just continue. I, I don't think we have much more to, to do and then we can finish the day in like by 12.30. Is that okay with everyone? Yeah? Good. Uh, so then also, let me share again my screen. So if we're talking also about how um, we're also give, like mostly we are giving, we're the ones giving, let's say the feedback to volunteers, but also the feedback from the volunteers can help our, our organization and where we are moving and maybe if the things we are doing are, are good or are bringing some, something that we want. And um, if you, uh, so I would like to uh, again have just like a short brainstorming um, again, just by yourself. If you can put the stickers in the jam board in the, in the slide number nine. Um, let me just go back to my sharing. Um, so I just put like kind of questions, maybe kind of help helping questions that can you can think like how to think about this. Uh, so maybe you can ask volunteer, how do you feel about our organization? Mm -hmm. And this can um, give you a feedback that uh, maybe sometimes, at least for from my experience, sometimes the volunteers felt like the activities were not uh, 
corresponding with our mission and vision clearly or they were not sure why we are doing what we are doing so this also could give us feedback okay we need to be maybe more clear of what we want to achieve with the activities we are doing uh or um a lot of people say that, like what a lot of volunteers say, say that it's a friendly environment that they like about our organization. So something in connection, like feedback that you're receiving from the volunteers and how this could be useful in, in your organization too. And there is the first sticker. It is our connection to the world of young people our target group, they know better about trends on social media. <laughs> yeah, that's a, that's a good one. I think we it's have true. a lot of, yeah, yeah, because of like the locals, they are the young people, you know, so it's our, you know, connection to the target group, basically. And uh, yeah, many times they tell us like, yeah, I think like this is like old school or something, you know, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. so they open our eyes sometimes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's like, sometimes it's really um, because it's changing so fast that you cannot really like, I mean, adjust to everything, but this can be really useful uh, to have volunteers who can, let's say, manage social media or at least partially. I think Andre is having also this uh, approach that uh, his volunteers were uh, managing social media. Um, mostly so that was also from their perspective it was more more authentic how the organization is being presented yes 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 so i see this also in some other organizations so but then yes then most of the posts are in english or it's sometimes difficult to translate it like bilingual sometimes they have it with some mentor that is like slovak and english and yeah but it's if it's about their activities it's interesting that they presented their way. But about this being old, yes, my ex-volunteer called me like boomer to, to say how old am I? And, uh, and the TikTok dances and all this new stuff, yes. It's, it's a learning process for us. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, also, I don't know who wrote this, but it can help us to see the black spots things we give uh, for granted and that the volunteers perceive in a different way. Yeah, that's uh, like uh, also like that's related in our case was also related to, let's say, friendly environment. Some volunteers maybe were not used to it that, you know, you can be sort of a friend with the coordinator. Yeah, in our in our case, it was uh, it was happening in, in two different directions. Like in, in one side, we thought that the hosting organization was working perfectly, mm -hmm. so everything was fine. And then the volunteers were giving feedback that something in the relationship was not going on in the, in the proper way. And in other cases, we were uh, not sure about how the, the the tutors from the hosting organization were actually helpful for the volunteers or we didn't have a good relationship with the, with the tutors from the hostel organization but the volunteers felt they were super and they were really helping and supporting and and so on uh, maybe just because they brought them out for for dinner and paying for the for the meal but still it's um it's a change of perspective that is uh, that is sometimes very helpful so that's why it was me writing this this note yeah great any more stickers coming in maybe i can just uh, contribute that it's also fine if the feedback is not helpful at all and to distinguish between that because sometimes the volunteer they don't have the let's say overview of some more complex things so they're saying like this is not working it should be like this but uh, not all the time, like uh, we have to say, oh yeah, they are the young people, so they must be right, you know, we are so old, but uh, it's also sometimes important to distinguish, like when I think that according to my experience, I think that uh, this is the right way. And then uh, it's also good to like discuss it further with the volunteer and to give them like more complex view. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, it's good to be like open for feedback, but obviously like 
well, they cannot see the bigger picture sometimes of what's uh, what's everything behind. Good. Okay, anybody else wants to contribute to this? Oh, you're good. It's fine. I mean, if you you know think of something else, feel free to put the sticker there. Uh, so. There is no failure, only feedback. <laughs> this is just one quote that I was trying to uh, be motivational. So <laughs> I hope you're motivated now. And uh, our last part is uh, sort of a kind of, I mean, uh, in the program, it says storytelling, but uh, let's say also the way how you perceive maybe yourself and like related to also mentoring and feedback. Um, you can approach it as kind of like self-exploring story also uh, as, as a volunteer. Uh, and we use also different tools. Um, we use a volunteering journal, uh, which can also help volunteer to reflect uh, kind of or volunteering diary uh, to, to reflect on the experience and like how the things are changing sometimes. Um, we came up with this tool. I mean, it was uh, experience from another organization from Slovakia, uh, and we found it also useful because sometimes, uh, and I know from like my own experience, I was just like writing a regular diary because sometimes you like cannot see also kind of improvement from the beginning uh, till the end, um, like what really happened. Uh, I would change the, the word terrible. <laughs> uh -huh, you mean even about the overall experience that it would not be terrible. Yeah, I mean, this is just like uh, one of the templates we can we can share with you or maybe some of you already are uh, are using the um, are using similar questionnaires. Uh, Andre was also mentioning that we we're like trying to send also the questionnaires to the volunteers. It really depends if you are a coordinating organization and maybe you don't meet the volunteers regularly, it's good to use uh, also questionnaires that they can just fill out regularly and you have an overview. Uh, and uh, the volunteering journal on the other side can also kind of help the volunteers themselves to, to reflect on what their what their learnings uh, what their learnings are. Uh, so, do you guys maybe have similar things or similar tools that you are using for reflection for the volunteers? I just want to say that uh, you uh, give example of this one that our volunteers developed. But uh, recently, like one month ago, I read maybe four different types of uh, this kind of. Uh, diaries and uh, i share now in the chat the thing the one i found the most uh, useful with the best uh, kind of structured question for reflection and i i think our, also our, our agent, agency suggested uh, this example that i sent as uh, the best example of volunteer diary in slovakia and they uh, send it also for other organizations that they can use it mm -hmm. Yeah, cool. Thank you. Thank you, Andre, for sharing. We will also put it in the file for, so you can find uh, all the materials together. Uh, Dia Porn is saying that one VSA volunteer sent her story to Teen Magazine and it's published. Many teens love her story and they would like to have uh, the same kind of experience. Um, so yeah, that can be also motivational. And uh, ideally that during the, when the volunteers are there, you kind of encourage them to, I don't know, write an article or make uh, regular uh, stories on their own Instagram or your, your organization. So that can be also helpful. And we also do kind of um, Instagram takeovers. We started doing this recently, um, but it, uh, it, really brings authenticity to the audience uh, and that our followers if we are sending organization that can they can also see like how really the day of volunteer looks like 
So also if you will be hosting, it's good to maybe give uh, volunteers the the rights to to manage your social media and maybe record uh, their days or like one week or depends how you how you will manage this because this this really works for for young people right now. And that also can can kind of uh, give you a feedback uh, for like how the volunteer is like if they feel like oh I really don't want to do anything because my experience is terrible, then uh, they will not they will not do it. Eliška says we also do it. Insta stories are really popular these days among young people. Yes. So um, I think we are done for today. So let's have maybe last round of questions uh, for today's session about uh, mentoring feedback what you heard today or if you want to add something 